Hey guys, we are back and today we're going to be talking about the health benefits of saunas and its impact on um, Alzheimer's. So Sanjeev, I, I actually was in a friend's sauna and yeah. they, he, the gentleman said to me, do you know that saunas actually have a positive impact on Alzheimer's? And I'm like, I didn't know that, but I bet you Sanjeev knows that. Well, <laughs> yeah. I had to go do some reading after yeah. you, you said that. I mean. Uh, there seem to be a lot of benefits for saunas, like heart, uh, you know, it's supposed to be protective for your heart. Um, but, you know, I did do some research and it looks like uh, there is some some observational studies. So it's okay. not what we call... So rank. there hasn't been scientific study yet? Uh, no, I mean, they, there's, there's, there's studies which I'm, I'm going to describe, but they're, sure. not, they're not randomized. It means that uh, they didn't, you know, have a, a control group and an intervention okay. group and like... But what they did, they looked at people over you know 20 plus years and so two different studies first of all let's just even talk about what yeah, a sauna sure. what a sauna is let's talk about that yeah so basically it's it's usually uh, a temperature between 8 80 degrees to 100 degrees okay and um, that's obviously above body temperature yeah right? some body, yeah some of it's you, you know, above body temperature sure. like when you're over 97 but um, it's like being in a hot tub but with dry air dry air okay. and usually people are in there for about 15 minutes 15 20 right. minutes and they may do that a multiple times per week right and generally it's found in the Scandinavian countries so uh, Finland it's part of their culture uh, Sweden mm -hmm. as well and people people are doing it you know anywhere from you know a couple of times a month to 15 times a month so it's wow. it is part of their culture to be in the sauna regularly and uh, so there's clearly some kind of health benefit other than the fact that you're sweating right like mm -hmm. i was in this person's personal sauna mm -hmm. and it felt like i was in a hot yoga class like i was literally <laughs> They're like, your toxins are coming out. Is, is, that, is that a true statement? Well, yeah, I think that the sweating, sweating yeah. is helping to get rid of, of uh, I guess you can call it toxins, but basically it's, it's your body's way to get rid of, get rid of the uh, mm -hmm. fluid. And um, sure, I think it probably has benefits. But looking at the study, what they did was they looked at over 20 years, uh, over uh, 2,000 men. And they followed them for 20 years, and they looked at those who were doing sauna two to three times a week, uh, c compared to those who were doing it once a week and those who were doing it four to seven times a week. So they did, okay. they basically looked at, at these, uh, these men who were doing sauna, different amounts of sauna, and what they found was that those who were doing it two to three times a week had a 20% reduction in Alzheimer's, and those who were doing it four to seven times a week were, had a 65% reduction wow. of Alzheimer's. So significant. That's pretty big. So pretty significant. So, so did they choose men with Alzheimer's then? These gentlemen no. had Alzheimer's? These people did not have Alzheimer's. They started age 42 to 60 and they followed them for, so that's kind of interesting. Okay. So they basically found okay. out how many people ended up getting Alzheimer's. Ah. Um, so it's, and they did control for age, uh, alcohol, body mass, blood pressure, cholesterol, smoking status, and chronic illnesses. They controlled for these factors. Okay. So it looks like a, it's a relatively good study but it doesn't prove causation again. It just proves that, hey, it seems to be associated with the people who do sauna more often just right. seem to be having less Alzheimer's. But it could be, you know, that maybe the people who like doing sauna just tend to have less Alzheimer's. Like, we don't really understand that. Um, but there's, there's, yeah, there's, there's a relationship there. There seems there's to be some type of relationship. Yeah. Maybe, you know, they did try to control for these other factors. And then the other study was a longer study done in Finland as well where they looked at um, 13,000 men and women aged 30 to 69. And what they, they followed them for 39 years. And what they did was they found, they compared the people who did only sauna zero to four times um, a month compared to those who did it nine to 12 times a month. Okay. And then they looked at people who, did, who had, did it like 13 to 30 times a month. Wow, like and a what, sauna every yeah, day? Yeah, pretty much oh every day God. was the max. And what yeah. they found was that the best, the lowest risk was the people who did the medium. So like ah. if you are like nine to 12 times a month, your uh, risk of it, dementia was, I think, 20% lower. Okay. And you had to have been around f five to 14 minutes and, you know, only For be... For there to have been an impact. Yeah. Right? So, I mean, yeah. you don't want to be even too long. Right. And so they said between five to 14 minutes was like the best duration and 80 to 99 degrees means don't go over 100 degrees. Right. So what they found was the people who had were in the very, very hot or in extreme... Uh, frequency had actually increased Alzheimer's. Oh. So it's a kind of a, 
you know, it, so why, there's a medium. There's like a yeah, happy, nothing again is yeah. You, too much of something good is not good. Yeah. <laughs> so like sugar. And <laughs> yeah. and what they're saying is that it could be because saunas reduce your blood pressure. Yep. Because you know, because all the blood is your blood vessels are are opening up, so you actually have lower blood pressure, and that's good for your brain. Uh, it also decreases uh, inflammation in your, and we know that. Alzheimer's is a, is a disease of, all of, the, infla brain. of the inflammation, inflammation okay. of, the, of the brain. So I think this was quite an interesting study. Again, some caveats here. We don't have a randomized trial. Like We haven't put people into a study and said, okay, these people are going to get sauna and these people are not, and then we're going to follow them for 20 years. Like, it's too expensive right, and right. it's too difficult to do. So that's why that looks like that hasn't been done, but it looks like there's an association. Sure. And maybe just to be aware that not to do this too much. Not don't to do, do it too in much. excess. But hey, like yeah, you know, I don't it's know probably a good idea to go, you know, five to ten times a month. Probably right. good. It's gonna well, it's help. not going to hurt. It's actually shown that it could ap actually help. Yeah. So like, optimally, it is. Uh, what's the frequency that they said is kind of the? I magic think that yeah, the magic number here was nine to twelve times a month, and compared to the other one, which was like four to seven times a month. So we're talking twice you know, a week. Yeah, twice yeah. a week at least, two to three times a week, we can easily do that. Uh, five to 14 minutes each okay. time, uh, temperature 80 to 99 degrees, and, uh, you know, five to 14 minutes. I don't yeah. know if I said that already. But, yeah. um, you know, what I was thinking, because this couple who was who just purchased this sauna, mm -hmm. they lost weight too, like, because I guess you're sweating, and yeah, you're is, that's sweating a benefit of a sauna and, and, also? Um, I, I think it, it could, I guess speed up Maybe. your metabolism potentially um but it's interesting how like with alzheimer's you know it, it it's so diet related intermittent fasting helps mm -hmm. and the sauna helps and the, the i guess the healthier you are the more optimal you are to like your body and everything like mm -hmm. it's just gonna it, it's gonna help and i want to just make a little segue because yeah. i looked at the 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 sauna i thought okay what about cold therapy yes would cold therapy help alzheimer's i did a little search on that and it looks like it hurts. No, no, it actually could oh, be beneficial as well. So okay. this is this is interesting. So, you know, when you're going from a sauna, what people normally do is they go into the super hot. Right. And then they go into the cold, like they jump into the cold pool Oh, like or, the cold plunge thing. Yeah. Okay. So it, it's probably what's happening is that in Alzheimer's, your body has a difficulty with regulating temperature. Okay. Like that's one of the problems that starts to happen. And I think maybe by this, it's kind of like exercise. Like by going into a sauna, you're kind of stressing the body. Mm -hmm. um, and then when you go into cold, you're kind of like stressing the body. So in effect, uh, it's kind of like exercising the, your your thermostat, making sure your thermostat's working. Yeah. Um, and you know what they what they have they found in mice is that. But you know, if cold therapy at the initially actually increases tau tau phosphorylation, this is like this again those tau tangles yeah, that we talk yeah, about inside the yeah. brain cells, it increases that. But if you just do repeated short cold exposures, what that does is that it actually stimulates brown adipose fat. Okay. Brown, it's called BAT. Brown adipose tissue. Okay. And so that brown adipose tissue kind of speeds up your metabolism, helps you like. It, it has a lot of benefits, improves your sugar metabolism, and that pr actually gives some benefits to people who have Alzheimer's. Well, yeah, because I know I'm, I'm starting to learn, you mm -hmm. had said part of the reason that they're getting Alzheimer's is that the brain can't, um, not disintegrate, it, 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 Metabol it can't metabolize the sugar. Yeah, there's a, right. there's a, there is okay. some type of problem with metabolizing sugar, and Anyways, stimulating brown adipose fat, it has a lot of benefits. Um, and uh, so it's, it's again, int very interesting here. So we have saunas could be helpful. Yes. And cold exposures could be helpful. So what pr makes sense to me is that it's probably being or into both together. of those. Yeah. It's probably a good idea to ha stimulate your body to jump into hot, jump into cold, and, and keep having your, your system basically get that exercise. That's how I'm thinking about it, yeah. uh, looking at the research. and. Uh, well, I know a lot of my friends and a lot of um, athletes that I know like to challenge their body, like to jump in the ice cold water, like mm -hmm. to do the saunas. So it's got to be good for your body and therefore good for your brain. So. Yeah, that's, that, that's basically pretty much it. Your brain is just your biggest, the biggest organ, uses 25% of the energy. And so if we can improve your know, energy metabolism in the body, it's going to impact your brain as well. So Amazing. I think that's a take-home point for, for our listeners that yep. uh, 
you know, it's it's shock both. The body. Yeah, <laughs> shock the body. It's good to do this type of thing. Good yeah. to have the cold showers. Good to have the saunas, and just keep on stressing your body that way. It's good. There you go. We're always bringing you the latest um, and most interesting therapies um, and and food and nutrition and medicine and research that's going to help you on your journey to learning more about Alzheimer's. So we'll see you next week. Take care, everyone.